Hello, welcome to the Castro Files. How are you doing, honey? I'm good. How about you? Doing well. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for joining us today. Like, why can't I see? Oh, because I don't have my glasses. Your glasses on because you're reading your iPad. It's all good. <laughs> but thank you again for joining us on this episode of the Castro Files. First and foremost, got like and subscribe to the podcast if you don't mind. Please. Check in, you know, do that. Share the show, of course. Yes. But also go out. Give us if you if you prefer audio versions, go out and check us out on iTunes and Spotify. Do us a favor, hit the little five star on your when you're when you're there hanging out or listening in. And then also out on our Instagram on the Castro Files, mm -hmm. you can find all of the images that we do for these shows that we post during the actual show or during the uh, for audio listeners. You can find them out there too. Correct. So, cool. Yeah. All right. With that, you got I've good, got tonight's you got a good story episode for us? Or, or show for us. So this one, I'd heard about this a long time ago. Okay. And I think I'd seen it maybe on, a, of course, like a Discovery Channel mystery or one of those types of situations, right? Or shows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's called, it's the Dialitolov Pass Incident. So you may remember hearing about this. And if you haven't, this is in Russia. And we'll have a map of it where it, where the Dietzlov, and I'm and if I'm butchering the name, forgive me. I'm gonna do my best with the names. Yeah. Like they're <laughs> Russian and you know, stuff like that. So And you're not, but, so yeah. Um, but there, it's very it's kind of it's way out from Moscow. So okay. it's in Russia, okay. but it's out there. Okay. Right. And it's in the outskirts like of Russia? No, 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 no. Or like it's I, I can't think what it's called, but it's it's basically out okay. in the mountains. Okay. Like way out. So there'll be a map that we'll show here. Um, but also this one is it's one of those ones that like the mystery had never been solved. Okay. We're gonna get into some of them. And they may have they may at least have an idea of okay. what had happened. So interesting. The Diet to Love Pass incident. So this is found out on ABC News uh, website, so you can check it out there. I'll post it in the links. So, incidents spark terror and conspiracy theories, but has the mystery finally been solved? And I'm not quite sure you'll agree. <laughs> so, when the search party finally found the bodies of missing hikers in the Ural Mountains, the scene was so horrifying and so confounding that it would inspire conspiracy theor theories for decades to come. Frozen corpses, strange injuries, and missing body parts. Thanks. Curious levels of radiation. Each discovery was more perplexing than the last. Who or what killed nine young and extremely experienced hikers on the slopes of the Dead Mountain in western Siberia in 1959? That was the name I couldn't think of just a second ago. Siberia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it's in there. All right. So for years, the tragedy has been analyzed and debated by scientists, amateur sleuths, and journalists. Whether it was a murder, a Soviet military test, or even the Yeti, no one could agree what had happened to them. But after 63 years, two, two researchers may have solved the mystery with technology borrowed from the animators of the Disney movie Frozen. Interesting. There's just one problem. Not everyone believes their hypothesis. Okay. The Slashed Tent. When the search party set out in late February of 1959, they were looking. They were still holding out hope that hikers had, might be found alive. While they were eight days late in returning from their trek, delays in the rugged Urals were not uncommon. All nine members of the expedition, mostly young students in their 20s, were highly skilled cross-country skiers. Okay. The search party climbed the slopes of Kolat Sikal, <laughs> which means dead mountain in the in the language of the Urals indigenous Mansi people. The hikers died in what's now called the Dietlov Pass. It was there that the that they re, that they realized something had gone terribly wrong. They found a tent which appeared to have been slashed open from the inside and hastily abandoned. The tent was half torn down and covered in snow. One of the rescuers, Mikhail Saravan, later recalled it was empty and all of the group's belongings and shoes had been left behind it's like they just bailed out of this right thing. they just took right? off like what's yeah right if you even if you have like a bear you stay in your tent right right you know there's even if it's just the material stay in your tent several sets of footprints were found in deep snow but they seemed to vanish just meters from the tent what could possibly drive nine experienced winter campers to abandon there goes that Hershey Sorry. kiss <laughs> to abandon their shelter and socks or bare feet and flee into the black icy night man we've got some photos of the actual tent or a photo of the actual tent that will come up 
temperatures in the Siberian mountain range dropped as low as 30, negative 30 degrees Celsius, which is really, really cold. Yeah. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit because Greg and math. Hashtag don't mix. Fahrenheit. Um, <laughs> with in it, 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 negative 30 Celsius in winter with night falling and no sign of hikers. And there's no way we can find that out through the Internet, probably. Um, with looking. with night falling and no sign of hikers, the rescuers set up camp and passed around a flask of vodka they had discovered in the abandoned tent. One of the rescuers proposed a toast to the health of the missing hikers. We were about to drink it when one of the guys turned to me. Mr. S- uh, oh Saravan. Gosh, negative later, 86. Yeah, negative 86. There you go. Fahrenheit. Thank you, Internet. Mr. Saravan later told the BBC, he said, best not to drink to their health, but to their eternal peace. <laughs> wow. The gruesome discoveries in the snow. It didn't take long for the search party to confirm the hikers had met a tragic end on the slope. At the edge of the forest, about 1.5 kilometers from the tent, were the bodies of two hikers, 23, 23-year-old Yuri Krishnavenko and 21-year-old Yuri Doroshenko. Dang, I nailed those ones. You did. The young men were dressed only in their underwear and had died of hyperthermia. They went out in negative or in 80, negative 80 degree winter mm-hmm. in just their underwear. Curiously, the branches of the nearby tree were broken five meters up the trunk. They had climbed it to get up to get the lay of the land. Had they climbed it to get the lay of the land yeah. or to escape something? They I both had see. appeared to have burns on their hands. The bodies of three more hikers, group leader Igor Dyatlov and Zainada Kolomorgova. No. Nope. Kolog- Rovba, sorry, that one I didn't get so well, and Rustam Slobodin were found scattered in the snow between the forest and the tent. While the trio also appeared to have died from hypothermia, a coroner found a small crack in Rustam's skull. The bottom uh, bodies of the four remaining hikers could not be revealed for months when melting snow revealed the location. The condition of their remains only deep in the mystery. All four were found at the bottom of a ravine in a running stream of water. Oh, wow. They clearly had met a violent, brutal end. Nikolai Thibodeau Brognols suffered from a fatal skull injury. The youngest member of the group, 20-year-old Lyamuda, Lyamula Dabanina, also had the old, was also the oldest, I'm sorry, let me go back to that. The youngest member of the group, 20-year-old Amelia, as well as the oldest 38-year-old Simon Zolotarov, had broken ribs and several chest trauma. Their severe chest trauma. Wow. Yeah. So these people are all just they're beat, beat to hell. up. They're yeah, tore they're just up. tore up, right? In yeah. many different ways. But then you have the other ones that aren't. They right. just died of hypothermia. They froze right? to death. They froze to death. I don't know which one's worse. They were worse. both missing eyes, and Light Amelia's tongue was gone. Why? Wait, what? So they were both, those two were missing their eyes and their, and one of their tongues was gone. Interesting. Why? How? What? This An is animal? where it's going to get weird to the fo- to the point. Remember, they found him only eight days later, right? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. But, but why just their eyes and their tongue so and not the rest go of them? To, this is where it, be, it makes the conclusion of these researchers seem, hmm. Okay. Sus, right? Suspect. So Alexander Kolitov's neck was twisted and his eyebrows were missing. Eyebrows? Yeah. A doctor who examined the body said the force of whatever hit him was equal to the effect of a car crash, according to documents leaked to uh, to Russian media. Several months after they found the remaining bodies, the Soviet Union declared that the hikers were were killed by an insurmountable force of nature, in quotes. The investigation was closed and declared top secret, as almost all domestic matters were in Soviet-era Russia. Like, they didn't let shit out, right? Right. But that didn't stop the tragedy becoming one of the nation's most enduring and hotly debated matters. Who or what killed the hikers? While many experts agreed that the avalanche seemed the most likely explanation, the original investigation rate more raised sense. more questions than answers. A study of the area suggested the location where they, where they pitched the tent was unlikely to be avalanche terrain. And there were no patterns in the snow around the abandoned tent to suggest that one had slipped uh, mm-hmm. swept through. With Soviet Union remaining tight-lipped about their investigation, conspiracy theories began to flourish. Some of their more outlandish ideas, like we said, were botched alien abduction, an attack by mythical Yeti, or a fluctuation in gravity even, were easier to discount, right? And like, we've never seen a Yeti. Well, what's a fluctuation in gravity? Like where you lift up. 
And I'm saying, but what, what, why, what, I mean, that wouldn't, your gravity stays the same, constant. Maybe. That's Russia, trying to trampoline. They're trying to do something. It's Maybe. Like, who knows? Right? But even the more realistic theories just didn't fit the evidence. Russian, investi uh, Russian investigative journalist Svetlana Oss wrote in her book, Don't Go There, Don't Go There, that she believed local hunters murdered the hikers while high on psychedelic mushrooms. So it's not a, it's not any better. I mean, or worse it's not. Than the other. Yeah, it's, it's not any more far fetched than a Russian. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. A Russian news station also theorized that it all was not well within the group. Perhaps one hiker turned against the others in a fit of rage. I don't know about that. To take an eye, eye eyebrows off. Eyebrows, of tongue, eyeballs. Yeah, I don't know. But the coroner said no human being would possess the strength to inflict the damage found on their bodies. With Soviet Union in the grip of a Cold War in the West, suspicion began to grow that the young hikers had fallen victim to a military test. In such a scenario, USSR forces were testing weapons in, re in the remote Urals, unaware people were, as um, sorry, were asleep on the slopes of Dead Mountain, mm -hmm. so shooting off rockets, shooting off stuff, wow. whatever. Yeah. Some experts thought the test involved radioactive weapons, which could explain the burns on some of the victims and the radiation on their possessions. Right. But others pointed out that they may have burned themselves trying to light a fire in the forest to keep warm after they abandoned the tent. Maybe. The contamination of the clothing. Would be a different burn, though? If a, a radiation burn, I think, is different, but I, it may present the same. same? I don't okay. know. The contamination of their clothing could also ex be explained away by the presence of a chemical thorium in their gas lanterns. Okay. Some type of... Uh, Burning. Yeah, fluid like, or yeah. fuel that they use. Parachute mines, which explode in the air, are known to cause the kind of devastating internal injuries suffered by the hikers. The most vocal proponent of the parachute mine theory was Yuri Yundin. When the hikers set out, they were initially a group of 10, but Yuri's chronic joint issues flared up in the snow and he turned back five days before the disaster struck. Until he died in 2013, Yuri insisted his friends were accidentally killed by powerful weapons. Yeah, this is where around. their new, the new idea comes okay, in. The new theory. The delayed slab avalanche theory. Armed with computer simulations and documents finally unsealed after the fall of USSR, two, Swi two Swiss scientists came together in 2019 to see if they could finally solve the, solve the riddle. For Joshua Guam, a snow expert, and Alexander Puzrin, a professor of geotechnical engineering, the avalanche theory still seemed the most likely, despite its obvious flaws. First, they addressed the angle of the slope on which the hikers had pitched their tent. Many opponents of the avalanche theory said Dead Mountain's incline was simply too gentle for the snow to uh, come hurtling down at any speed. But the researchers discovered that the undulating slope of the Mount Dead Mountain was just steep enough, an angle of about 30 degrees for an avalanche to, uh, to occur. And You've got, if you've gone to the mountains, if you've seen snow, stuff like that, like, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't take much of a pitch for it to build up like a cornice right. or something, and then that just gives way. If you've snowboarded or skied in, like, mm -hmm. that country or anything like that, it can happen, and it can happen very fast. fast. It's unsuspecting. Like, right. They shoot cannons at, at big resorts and stuff for a reason to kind of lock, to shake that. Even off of, like, snow not down. very steep slopes, yeah. right? So, yeah. One decision the hiker, hikers had made that night may have sealed their fate. They dug into the side of the slope so that they could protect themselves and the tent from the wind. But in doing so, they may have destabilized the, an underlying snow layer and on the side of the mountain, or on the side of the mountain. It would have happened immediately. <clears throat> Several hours after they ate their last meal and fell asleep together, a snow slab about five meters wide could have hurled down towards them. And basically but covered I, them up immediately and then though spread them that over. wouldn't have been immediately that would have been five hours later so a lot of times you'll see they'll do studies and you can find these on on YouTube or the internet and there's a point in the snow depth where it just shears off okay right and that's how they do tests and say all right it's the temperature variance from this portion of the snow to this portion there's this water layer or something it's like the melt point okay and that's what causes it to come down right that Makes could sense. have happened. okay so, Professors Puserin, um, Puserin and Guam then needed to work out how quickly the ice slab of matter could travel down the slope. 
Disney lent the researchers their animation codes used to make the snow look like look so realistic in 2013 movie Frozen. So they used the technology from Disney to then incorporate it into it theirs out. and do some right. math. Their simulation showed that the snow slab would have hit the hikers with the force of a four-wheel drive. Enough to break ribs and skulls and force the group to flee for safety of the forest. Our work shows that the plausibility of a rather rare type of snow slab insta- instabilities that could possibly explain the Dyatlov Dio- Pass incident, they wrote. In their peer-reviewed paper published, and this was in last, so this was in 2021, when that okay. article was, or when that was published. Okay. So we do not explain nor address other controversial elements surrounding the investigation, such as the behavior of the hikers after leaving the tent, locations, and states of the bodies. Earlier this year, the research found another clue. In January, they recorded evidence that two slab avalanches had recently occurred on the slope where the hikers died. The slabs, buffeted by high winds, were practically invisible within hours. Okay. So it comes down, and then the wind just blows just it over. It looks like it's just, just snow. Fresh snow. Yeah. Right. In 1959, it took this search party three weeks to find the tent, more than enough time to, for howling winds to, van- to vanquish any trace of what had occurred. So did science solve the mystery? The snow slab could explain why the hikers had had ripped open their tent and fled without pausing to put on their shoes, coats, pants, or anything else. Right. At the edge of the forest, perhaps, they tried to tried but failed to build a fire to stay warm. By then, they would have known that they were in a dire trouble. At some point, the group became separated as some hikers tried to find their way back to the tent to retrieve their belongings. With poor visibility, they soon lost each other in in the black at night and succumbed to the frigid weather. The four remaining hikers wandered in the forest before falling into a ravine to their deaths. Their missing body parts were potentially eaten by scavenger creatures, like we talked about, mm-hmm. or washed away by the stream below. It is eight days of being in the water right. deteriorates it rocks. Yeah, it doesn't take your trees. eyebrows off, though. I don't know. That's. I'm trying to think. If you fell down ice, like I've fallen on snow, mm-hmm. like, and... Like even the dogs, right? When they play on the snow up, at, you know, Their Colorado. Feet get tender. Or they can even start bleeding. Right. Right. And that's only from a few minutes. Yeah, but this explosion. is your eyebrows. Your but eyebrows. What if you fell and it literally scraped. Yeah, the I, I don't. Face. I don't. But think, you would have other yeah, marks. I don't I guess. I don't. I'm trying to think, think you would something. just take the eyebrows. That's that's like a burn. You right? would like if you did that because it would have to be straight across too. So unless you fell sliding sideways. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something. Maybe it was the fuel or something. I don't know. Like I don't know. Just burned I don't know if I, if I agree with their... I don't know. Their missing body parts, like I just said, were probably washed away or eaten by scavenged, uh, scavenged creatures. It's neat resolution to an enduring mystery. Sometimes the forces of nature are simply too great for humans to endure. But for some for some who have studied the tragedy, the pieces of the puzzle still don't fit yeah, perfectly together. Be me. We believe that the avalanche hypothesis cannot be the c- completely ruled out, but it is not... The most likely scenario, Carl Berkland, the director of the U.S. Forest Service's National Avalanche Center, told the New York Times in April, for him, the angle of the slope is just not steep enough. Yeah. While it may be remotely possible, we would suggest that it would be highly improbable. I would agree. Others insist no experienced hiker would ever leave their tent without clothes, even after an avalanche. Right. Yeah. There's no way I'm getting... I mean... Yeah. You're... If you make it out of your tent... You're lucky even if you can get out of your tent. Right. Otherwise, you're just going to be buried. And you wouldn't, you know. Yeah, you don't bail out. Um, While it may be remotely possible. There we go. If you were were in that type of harsh environment, it's suicide to leave the shelter without your clothes on. For people to do that, they must have been terrified by something. Jim McElwain, a geohazards expert, told New Scientist. I can't understand why else they would have behaved in such a way unless they were trying to flee from someone who's been tracking them. Or something, yeah. The hikers never reached the ridge they were climbing towards, but today it bears their name. The Dyatlov Pass honors the group's leader, 23-year-old Igor Dyatlov, who planned the ill-fated adventure for his friends. It's the story of nine friends who fought together against the force of nature, and they didn't leave each other. So I'll have a picture at the end. That's interesting. For, there's a picture coming up for. for I mean, it's an nine. interesting theory, but I also don't agree. There's so many holes and so many like. There's just too many unanswered questions. What the heck happened? Why were they so scattered? And, and why? 
that what? damage that caused their body, if it was happening during the avalanche, they wouldn't have gotten out of their tent. It would have killed them in their tent. Right. I mean, even avalanche, I mean, they absolutely could break your bones and do all oh, sorts yeah. of stuff, right? You see it. And, I mean, there's, there's videos. There's reason people Especially have, if they're going fast have, like, and there's trees. Have, like, airbags on them now when yeah. they're snowboarding and skiing, right? So, yeah. I mean, we're pretty familiar with that kind of environment. Terrain. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to get out and run barefoot in your underwear. Right. Or without, yeah, even just your shoes, even if you didn't have That's, time, like you protect man, your Man, no, right? yeah. With the intent of going back. Right. So, Like if you climbed out, okay, so let's just say you did get in an avalanche, right? And your negative tent. 80 degrees. Your tent is destroyed, obviously, but you've gotten out of it. And now you're like, okay, I need to get my stuff out of the tent so that I can try to move forward and get rescued it was a you know so i i was something i don't know what i think it was <laughs> but i don't think it was a lot of stalking like they said maybe it was somebody stalking maybe or it was a military uh test gone exercise. wrong or you know something yeah i don't know there's a lot of questions on that one so and i had heard of it i had heard of this before probably from one of our shows or something mm. you know that we would like it's to a watch. really cool story it it's is a cool really story. interesting one that people are still trying to figure out to this still day still questioning that was in 59 right yeah so you're talking seven or yep. just 62 years ago or yeah. whatever, right? So, 63 years ago, actually. Yep. So. All right. Well, good I hope you story, enjoyed that honey. One. That was good. It was Absolutely. interesting. Y'all, thank you so much for yes, hanging out you guys. with us today on the Cash Hope you enjoyed Files. the story. Absolutely. On your way out, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Yep. And, of course, share the show. We appreciate yep. it. Sharing is caring. <laughs> I like to do that. All right. We appreciate y'all. Love Bye you, Bye, guys. Have Catch a good week. Later. Love you, too, babe. Cheers.